This is a CBS 4 News special report. We continue to follow developments in the coronavirus pandemic. Right now, we want to uh, take you to a live picture from Tallahassee where Governor Ron DeSantis is giving uh, us an update. Northeast Florida. Uh, Miami-Dade County school administrators are handing out computers and mobile devices, uh, and Comcast agreed to provide free Wi-Fi for the next 60 days for our kids who uh, will will be at home and and may want to uh, take take some uh, education there. Uh, we also have restaurants providing free lunch, Jimmy John's in Tallahassee, providing free sandwiches to kids during these school closures. Um, Toasted Restaurant in Orange County providing free kids meals this week, Monday through Friday. Uh, we have. Uh, we launched, announced our initiative um, with in, down in Broward County with Memorial, our National Guard, uh, for, for more convenient uh, drive-through type testing. Uh, it's important to uh, recognize folks throughout the state are making testing options more available. We have obviously more capacity to do that. People have test kits. So Fort Myers, Pensacola, West Palm, Tallahassee, uh, you're seeing healthcare folks really working uh, to, to get that in the community. So we really appreciate their efforts. And uh, this is not something that can be done from Washington, D.C., can't be done just from Tallahassee, really requires all the folks in our communities to do well. Uh, we have just obviously received a new uh, guidance from the CDC. So we are in the process of internalizing uh, those recommendations and seeing how that would influence and affect uh, any policy in the state of Florida. Uh, but I, could I can tell you that uh, the key guidance of being, if you're somebody who is elderly, if you're somebody that has a significant uh, medical condition, uh, please avoid any types of, of crowded gatherings and, and stay home if at all possible. That's the best way uh, to be able to protect you uh, if you're in those vulnerable uh, capacities. Anybody, regardless of their uh, age or regardless of whether they have an underlying health condition, if you end up not feeling well, Stay home from work, uh, get better, um, but don't go to work with your sick. Um, and I know the Congress is working on things. Um, I think clearly uh, there's a need to, you know, provide immediate relief for folks who may be dislocated as a result of what we're seeing right now with the economy, but then also to provide an incentive for people to stay home if they're sick. They shouldn't have to make a decision about, well, I don't, I'm sick, I don't, really want to, I don't really want to go to work, but if I don't go to work, then I can't pay my rent. So I think Congress has a responsibility uh, to address that. I want to say something. We had a call today with the president and the vice president and all the governors. There was a news report out about saying that uh, the president just said, you guys just get your own supplies. Um, uh, be careful what you believe. I think what, what he was saying was something that's very sensible. We are we have requests in for the federal government for things like ventilators, for example, and we probably will get some of those fulfilled. Um, we also are getting our own, in addition to the stockpile we have, getting those directly uh, from the manufacturers and paying for those. And what the president was saying, if you can go get them yourself, uh, you can then cut out the federal bureaucracy and potentially get it, get it quicker. There's no financial difference either way. It's going to be a 75 percent federal reimbursement on either side. And so what he was saying was sensible, and that's the exact vice that Jared has been seeking these on our own from the beginning, as well as seeking help from the federal stockpile. So I thought it was important to just clear that up. Uh, St. Patrick's Day, uh, it seems every community in Florida that had a parade has canceled uh, the parade. Um, I think that that makes sense. I know Tampa and Fort Lauderdale ha uh, have done it, uh, St. Augustine. Uh, look, it's a great day. It's a great day to have fun, um, and we'll just make it even better next year. But, but now's the time to, to stay home. You know, if you, if you can fire up a Guinness in your own house, no problem with that. You're not going to get any arguments from me, but, uh, but I think it's good. Uh, our real big announcements today uh, recognize the economic consequences uh, that we're seeing with what, it, with what is going on um, with the coronavirus, and particularly uh, the effect that this may have, what well, is having, and the potential to have even greater effect on our small businesses. Uh, yesterday, I sent a letter to the Federal Small Business Administration to turn on the SBA loan program for small businesses. Um, I think that's important, but I don't think that's enough. Uh, so today, we're going to supplement those SBA loans uh, with a $50 million bridge loan program from the state of Florida. 
Now this amount may be expanded at a later time based on demand and necessity, but this will be available for small businesses um, in all counties within the state uh, from two to 100 employees. Uh, you can get $50,000 immediately, one year term, um, and a limit of one loan per business, 0% uh, fixed rate and no prepayment penalty. The reason this is important is we think that this is obviously something that's affecting the economy. We hope this is not something that affects the economy infinitum, that it's relatively short. Um, the problem is if you're in some of these industries that are really getting hit, you, know, you have a, a, a cash flow issue, um, particularly if you have tight margins. So this is a way to kind of keep people afloat. Um, and then when we get on the other side of this, hopefully can be able to get back uh, to business as usual. The other thing that we're doing um, because we recognize the, the tax flow issues is providing, or excuse me, cash flow issues is providing tax assistance for businesses. So I'm directing the Department of Revenue to provide flexibility on the deadlines of taxes due, such as corporate income tax and sales tax, to assist businesses that are adversely affected from COVID-19 mitigation measures. Um, some of these corporate income tax payments can be deferred till you know the end of the fiscal year. Probably doesn't make that big of a difference from the state either way but it may make a big difference for a company um, that is having problems with cash flow. Uh, we are at the Department of Health um, going to now do twice daily official updates in terms of the infections and the test results, uh, 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. If you go to floridahealth.gov now, you actually can click on a link where they have uh, the entire state of Florida, you can go county by county, see the number of cases, and um, see who has, um, you know, we've, we've documented a certain number of international travel. So they have some pretty good amplifying information on there. And again, that's at floridahealth.gov. Uh, uh, I did ask uh, HHS to send us back those 61 Floridians in Georgia. Um, we think that the plane, it should have arrived in Sanford, Florida within uh, the last hour or two to drop off 16 of those Floridians. Uh, they will be transported to their homes uh, via um, trans uh, a bus transportation and the remaining passengers will arrive in Fort Lauderdale by six where HHS contracted with another bus company to take them home. Uh, we'll have Department of Health teams working with each individual walk them through the next stages of isolation and testing, but I'd much rather have them self-isolating back at home than be um, in another state at an Air Force base, which the accommodations may not be uh, what we would like. Um, now, 15 of those people have elected to simply stay, um, and I think the main reason is some of them have family members who are sick, so they wanted to stay with those. Uh, we're staying in close contact with business, local, federal officials. Uh, we spoke with a number of folks in both the private sector and the public sector. Sector. Um, I want to thank um, uh, some folks. We uh, obviously are doing stuff with testing with the state. You have some of the healthcare providers are doing things as well. Uh, but you know, the federal government is rolling out um, an opportunity to expand testing, particularly some of the drive by testing. So we're seeking uh, their involvement here in Florida. We think we'd be a good state to have some of those test centers. Uh, so we've already gotten approval. Uh, I spoke with the owner of the Dolphins today, Steve Ross. They're going to let us use the parking lot um, at the Dolphins Stadium. The Jacksonville Jaguars will let us use that stadium and the Orange County Con or the, the parking lot at that stadium and the Orange County Convention Center will let us use that parking lot. And so as the federal government sends resources for that, uh, we're ready to receive it, ready to work with them on both the state and local level. So we hope that they're able uh, to do that um, and do that very quickly. Uh, so the snapshot of cases in Florida, most recent, uh, 137 Florida residents, um, 18 non-Florida residents. Uh, we have had four fatalities, three in Florida, one out of state. Uh, 760 negative test results, uh, 568 uh, pending test results. Uh, we've monitored 1,653 uh, people to date. Um, as of this afternoon, 38 uh, infections in Broward, which is our most um, uh, prevalent county in terms of infections. So uh, we'll hear uh, some updates from some of our folks here, then I'm happy to take a few questions. So the Surgeon General, you wanna provide an update? Uh, thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Governor, <clears throat> when I really realize, although this is a massive state response, each of you and your communities can do things to stop the spread of COVID-19. 
First, avoid crowds and also practice social distancing. Our strategy is containment and mitigation. Containment means that we identify individuals who have COVID-19 and their immediate contacts so they will be isolated to stop the spread. This is what the Department of Health does. These individuals will be asked to isolate for 14 days, which is the period of incubation. To help this process, today we hired 100 additional epidemiologists to actually complement our staff. I very much want to recognize the incredible activities of our staff who are working night and day in this process. As the governor mentioned, we are also working with local communities to enhance uh, testing sites where if a physician orders a test, individuals can go. We are also working with hospitals to identify their surge capacity and resources that they may need in the event that patient demands go up. We have also, as the governor mentioned, we also have a new COVID-19 tracker on our website that you can look at to see where cases are. The vast majority of our cases in Florida of COVID-19 are related to international travel or individuals who have come from other domestic areas in the United States where there is COVID-19 or contacts of individuals who have COVID-19. If you have traveled internationally to Florida within the past 14 days, if you have traveled from a domestic site where there's COVID-19 in the United States within the past 14 days, we ask that you practice social distancing in the event that you develop COVID-19 to stop the spread. Uh, avoid the elderly, avoid the public, and if you develop symptoms, isolate at that point. We all can play an important role in stopping COVID-19. We can all lower our individual risks. We can all make a difference. Thank you. Mary. Thank you, Governor. In Florida, we know what emergency preparedness is and how, as a state, we must respond. While there are uncharted waters around us, Florida knows how to weather storms. But the eye of this storm is disproportionately focused on our most vulnerable. We must join forces to collectively do everything possible to safeguard our elderly and our medically frail. Like many in Florida, I right now have a three generational home. I have my 86 year old mother and my 25 year old son. And they have formed a pact that they're going to support each other and avoid public activity. A little easier for my 86 year old mother, a little more challenging for my 25 year old son. But I absolutely understand the fear that everyone with older loved ones are facing today. Last night, we communicated to thousands of providers the requirement to immediately prohibit visitation at nursing homes, assisted living facilities, and other residential and long-term long -term care providers serving our vulnerable populations with very few exceptions. I am focused on communicating directly with family and friends to explain why our state is taking these unprecedented steps to restrict visitation. I understand how desperate families are to make sure their loved ones are, self, are safe and well cared for. Our long-term care providers are looking at many creative ways to support families and friends to be able to communicate with their loved ones in these long-term care residential settings. I also want to express my deep appreciation for the staff in my agency who have been out visiting nursing homes and assisted living facilities throughout the state to provide critical support. Since last week, we have visited over 300 facilities. 
Additionally, I have spoken personally with a number of large long-term care providers in our state to support expanded regional capacity in order to safely and appropriately isolate residents if and when that is needed to prevent the spread. Again, I want to express my appreciation for the state associations and the thousands of long-term care providers who are going above and beyond to protect our most vulnerable. The Florida Department of Health is immediately notifying my agency when there, when there is a suspected COVID-19 case in a long-term care facility. We are effectively partnering with local county health departments to quickly deploy joint teams to ensure appropriate precautions are in place, to care for the resident and to protect other residents and staff to include immediate hospital transfer. Right now, there is a true concern among nursing facilities and assisted living facilities about accepting patients back from hospitals without verification that they have been tested negative for COVID-19. In order to support our loved ones being able to return to their homes and nursing facilities and assisted living facilities, we want to encourage and support hospital physicians to appropriately test our high-risk elderly populations and medically frail for COVID-19 in order to support more timely transfers. That testing, because it will exceed current CDC guidance, must be done through a commercial lab or a hospital lab that is set up to test. I want to commend our hospitals throughout our great state and their leadership as they prepare for the unexpected. While hospitals have strong commitment and expertise in infection prevention and control, the challenges they are facing today are the ability to maintain adequate supplies, to anticipate the demand for hospital beds and especially intensive care beds, timely testing results, and the ability to safely insulate their staff from exposure to COVID-19. It is imperative that hospitals comprehensively screen their visitors to reduce the threat of the infection entering their facility. To conserve healthcare resources and to further reduce the risk in their facilities, we strongly encourage hospitals to consider limitations on elective procedures. My agency last week initiated the emergency status system, which we continue to expand in order to track critical bed capacity throughout the state. I want to remind all health care providers, if you are in need of additional supplies, please contact your local county emergency manager to provide information on your current supply, when your next delivery is expected, and the rate at which you are going through your supply so that the state can effectively deploy resources. I'm grateful for the Department of Health for all of their support for hospitals and the resources provided to urgently activate hospital labs capable of testing for COVID-19. Additionally, I am working directly with hospitals and large health systems to continue to identify potential vacant wings and or vacant buildings where we can provide additional inpatient hospital capacity to the extent that that may be needed. I am confident that we will weather this storm together as we stay focused on protecting and safeguarding those in the We United have been States watching a news conference by Governor Ron DeSantis and top state health officials bringing us up to date on the coronavirus in Florida.